Uh, so, hi, my name is Charlotte and uh, I'm doing my PhD research on wild vanilla species here in Costa Rica. Uh, so, as you probably know, there, there are a lot of wild species growing in the forest of vanilla. Um, but nowadays they only cultivate one species in the plantations, like the commercial species that is actually coming from Mexico originally but there are wild species here growing in the forest so the goal of our research is actually to uh, look how much potential they have to also plant and to cultivate them so yeah my name is jose um, i'm a nature guy working mostly in the osa peninsula region in the south pacific costa rica um, i focus mostly in corcovado and uh, well I've been guide guiding for the last four years in the area and uh, I fall in love with the area. I don't want to move somewhere else. Uh, most of the time I'm just um, guiding groups in the day hike or just three day hike in Corcoval and with my own company, uh, Osa Roots, and with other companies as well. But um, the rest of the time that I have free, I also like to um, participate in the research projects like, uh, like Charles project with this which is vanilla. So the first step is to look for all the species here in the forest, where they are growing, which type of habitat, what do they need, like understand a little bit more about the biology and ecology. Um, so for example, what we did today um, is like basic measurements. Um, first of all, we look around in the forest if we see, if we see a vanilla species. And then uh, the first thing we try to do is identify the species. So, for example, I have here one species. Uh, it's called Vanilla odorata. Um, and then we take some measurements about uh, the tree that is growing on because it's a uh, climbing orchid. You see how, how much light is getting in? Yeah. Because the light is very important for the growth of the vanilla. Yeah. So it has to be not enough, but sufficient to grow. So we, we're looking at it, there's a difference between the different species and the, and the life that is coming into the canopy. So we take basically like three reference points because sometimes the vanilla is growing in a, you know, this wavy shape. So we cannot just take one straight line. You have to take like three different uh, uh, references. Yeah, it's a small fish eye. Yeah. It's very handy to take because I always... This is a tutor tree to grow on. So we measure the DBH, so the diameter. Uh, we identify the, the species. Of and we also look at the species because it might be that they prefer some kind of species because of, well, the leaf litter that falls down. Maybe some leaves have better nutrients for the species to grow. So. We're also like looking at the vegetation around the species, and uh, yeah. And one of the hardest parts is to is to identify the identification of the tutor tree because, yeah. you know, in the in this area we have like 700 different tree species, and uh, if we're not with an expert, we hardly know. Maybe we can identify by family the most the genus sometimes, but most of the cases it's really hard to know. Uh, but when it's big trees, it's easier. When the smaller is difficult. Uh, we take measurements of the canopy, so how much light there is coming in. Um, what else do we measure? Uh, yeah, we take the coordinates, so the GPS coordinates, because then with those uh, coordinates we can actually make distribution maps and see, okay, where are the species growing exactly here in Costa Rica? And, um, and with this information we can put it into uh, uh, programming um, it's called GIS well it's the program is called ARC and we can make actually maps of distribution so that it's, uh, it's it's maps that are showing the potential zones where the species are growing and we can overlay those maps with maps of land uses and then identify for example okay here is a potential zone where uh, vanilla can grow and then we see with the land use map, okay, here is an area where there is nothing now, okay, but we can reforest this area and then uh, cultivate vanilla within this area. That's really interesting. That's probably a seed that came here. But here it's cut as well. Yeah, I was going on the left. Yeah, it goes all the way there. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
The, the flowers are typically orchid flowers and once they get pollinated um, they form this bean, it looks like a green bean, it's called the vanilla pot and then after some time and a whole processing you get like the, the yeah, it's first a green bean and then it turns into a black bean, the final product. Um, so it's actually a really interesting uh, cultivar because you can grow it into the forest so you don't need to cut forests. Um, you just plant them, yeah, because it needs a tutor tree to grow in. Wow. So it's a really um, well, the commercial potential of the vanilla species in Costa Rica yeah. and, uh, and the South Pacific mainly. And uh, well, basically, I'm just helping her in the field work, um, doing all the, all the photograph and the measuring and just being company in the forest because, um, you know, it's not very recommended to go by yourself there. Uh, so. It can happen, many things can happen, snake bites and uh, wasp bites and things like this. Um, so you, you want to have someone with you if something like this happen. Um, I'm basically helping her because I think it's a really, really interesting project with a lot of potential um, there to help the social, um, like the economic uh, development of the region. Um, basically because there's a lot of uh, poor people living in the area and um, not many opportunities to grow if it's not tourism. So we mostly have uh, African palm oil and the people who have the land and they don't know what to grow because of uh, uh, lack of education or maybe yeah something like this. So I, I really like to help her and uh, because we, we want the, the people to start a new, a new, they have this new vision of the vanilla that it can actually help by producing, by selling these really uh, aromatic species uh, other than, uh, you know, that uh, African olive palm that is just destroying the forest in, in the, they cutting down the forest uh, for, for growing this monoculture, which is not good at all. But uh, this vanilla can actually develop in agroforestry um, systems together with other plants and trying to imitate a natural environment. So I think that's a really good, um, a really good alternative to do here in the South Pacific. So that's why I'm helping her, and it does, I, I believe in the project, and I think it's really interesting. And I'll, I'll do, I'll give my efforts to that. Okay. So, so far, well, there's very little data, but Ruth from Mosa Conservation found an agouti eating a, a fruit, a ripe fruit that was uh, fallen down on the ground. So that might be that they are dispersers of the vanilla. Um, and then also they found uh, orchid bees that are using like the smell of the, of the seeds of the vanilla to attract female orchids, orchid bees. So they probably are also dispersers of the, of the vanilla. So there it started, so probably like a seed uh, was falling down there and then because it's so growing and it's very, very young, it's a young plant. It's really interesting. And then it's the first time I see like all the... The day the they found the, the seeds. On the on the bee was with a trap, right? Yes, uh huh. Yeah, with a trap. That's really cool because they like orchid bees in their hint legs. They have like little sacs, so they put like the seeds in these little sacs. Um, how do you call it? Bolsas. Yeah. So, like they put it in those, and uh, well, it keeps the aroma of the vanilla, so it, tra it attracts uh, the females. Because only the males. Well, so far they've only seen that the males do this. So. Uh, so it's a really interesting cultivar to, to cultivate within reforestation area, secondary forest and actually give uh, something extra economically to the local communities because that might be a problem now that people don't see the real uh, value of the forest but if you say okay there are species like this that have a high economically value and you can grow them in the forest then it's actually stimulating them to preserve the forest or actually reforest as well and cultivate this once uh, in the forest. <laughs> this is the actually the final goal of the whole of the whole project. So to localize the wild species, the wild populations, protect them, but then actually see okay here in this area they can grow as well and cultivate them in those areas. <laughs> Very good.